Eels. Did I just see a look of disgust across all your faces? Well, that's not that surprising, considering these slimy, wriggly, snake-like fish are not well loved in the US. I felt the same way until I started studying them. Because then I learned all these amazing facts, like how they're born way out in the open ocean after the adults have traveled hundreds of miles to where they spawn. But after they spawn, they die. They can also travel over land, swim backwards just as well as forwards, and live to over 40 years old. They're also important ecologically as a top predator, as well as a food source for larger fishes and mammals. They're also important economically, especially the really young eels, which can be sold for up to $2,000 a pound. But then I learned that catches of these incredible fish have been drastically declining over the past decades, so much so that they are being considered for listing as an endangered species. There are so many threats that American eels have to deal with, it's no wonder their population is in peril. Dams prevent them from reaching a lot of their original habitat, and what is available has been altered or destroyed. Also, we're overfishing them, polluting their waters, and maybe worst of all, not really being aware or caring that any of this is happening. But I care, and that's why I'm studying another one of their threats, a threat that's even stranger than eels. It's a parasitic nematode that infects and severely damages an eel's swim bladder. A swim bladder is an air-filled organ, kind of like a balloon, that fish use to control their position in the water. These tiny parasitic worms live inside the swim bladder, where they feed on an eel's blood, causing the swim bladder walls to thicken, leaving little space for air. Now I bet you're asking yourself, how does this affect the eel? Well, everyone, that's the big unanswered question, and that's what my project addresses. I'm collecting eels from around the Chesapeake Bay, counting their parasites, and looking at their swim bladder condition. So far, I've found that over 60% of the eels are infected, and even more have damage to their swim bladders. My, the results of my project will show the impact of this parasite on American eels in the Chesapeake Bay and determine if it's causing them to die early. This information can then be used to change fishing regulations to account for this impact, thereby making the eel fishery more sustainable. This project is an important step towards protecting and restoring the incredibly unique American eel. Thank you.